Hi, this is Gary with Mac Most Now. On today's episode, let's look at iMovie for the iPad. So iMovie for the iPad is basically the same app that has been available on the iPhone 4 for a while. It's not really a full-on video editor, not at all. You can put clips together, add some photos, add some audio, put some transitions, but you don't have much choice on the different things that you can do. It's basically just a quick tool to be able to compile quick videos for sharing while on the go. So here's the initial iMovie screen on the iPad 2. You can flip through your projects and you can see the name of the project, the date, and the length of the project at the top. A little preview there at the bottom. To create a new project use the plus button at the bottom of the screen. To add a clip you just search through your videos on your left. Now these are videos that are in your camera roll. So videos that you've taken with your iPad. You can select one and then it will have a blue arrow there. You can select only a portion of the video if you want by moving the yellow dots or you can just tap the arrow there and it adds it. You can add a second one just like that. Then you can scroll through them at the bottom of the screen left and right just by dragging and you can pinch to zoom in and see more of an area. Now the space between any two clips has this little marker here. You can see it. That's the transitions area. Let's tap on that once and it will highlight and the timeline will jump to it. Do a double tap on it and it will give you the transition settings. You can choose non cross dissolve which is standard throughout all of iMovie here but you can also do the theme. The theme will depend upon which theme you have selected. You can select themes by going to the settings at the upper right and choose from a very small selection of different themes. For titles you can select a clip like that and then double tap it and it gives you the title style. So none means there's no title associated with that clip. Then you've got opening titles, middle titles, and ending titles. And what you get there will depend upon which theme you have chosen. So this is with the current theme. If I choose one of these, tap outside of the area there, I just get the sample text. I tap on the sample text and I get the keyboard and I can type the title that I want. For audio I can hit the audio button and then I can choose the theme music as I can choose a piece of music from any of the themes even ones the one I'm not using and I can also choose something from one of the songs I have in my iTunes collection and it throws it over the entire movie. Now in addition to that I can also choose sound effects and I can only choose from this list of sound effects here I would hope there would be a way to add your own sound effects in the future, but you just tap it and it adds it. And unlike the sound effects, uh, the music for the entire project, I can actually adjust this and set where I want it to go by tapping on the yellow dots. And then I could actually select it, and it's a bit tricky, but I can drag it to another spot. Another type of audio I can add is voiceover. This is the microphone button here. And then I can record a voiceover. Uh, it'll actually count down and I can narrate the video as I watch it. So I can just add my own audio there and at any point just stop. And you can see the voiceover appear there as a recording. One of the most interesting features of iMovie is the ability to add photos. And the reason this is interesting is some of the options that are there. So I can tap on a photo from my album here, add it in. I can double tap it and I can add a title to it. I can also extend it by just dragging the yellow dots there. Um, and in addition, you can see it's kind of got the Ken Burns effect here. Look in the preview area here, you can see there's a start button and an end button and a done button here. So if I press start, that's exactly how it will look at the beginning of showing the clip. So I could say, zoom all the way out here then I tap end and I can position how I want it to look at the end of the clip and press done. So now as I scroll through the area I can see how it's going to zoom in and pan a little bit to a certain spot. So once you're done with your creation go back to my projects and you can see it here in the list and you can tap the export 
button at the bottom. You can send this to your camera roll which basically renders the movie out and saves it as an individual movie that you can then uh, email, you can transfer, uh, sync to your Mac. You can also send it directly to some websites like YouTube and Facebook. And you can also send the project to iTunes which is only useful if say you want to continue editing on another iPad or on a an iPhone 4 that also had iMovie. You can't transfer the project to iMovie on the Mac. So one of the biggest limitations of iMovie for the iPad is that you can't add video from any other source except from the camera roll. So you can either use movies that you've taken with your iPad 2. There are ways to get movies that you've taken with your iPhone onto your iPad 2 and use those. But trying to get other videos, anything else, is almost impossible. So I would say that iMovie for the iPad is not even close to being a replacement or an equivalent to iMovie on the Mac. It's simply a fun little video toy that you can use, share videos with friends, if all you've got available is your iPad or iPhone 4. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page, and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.